Off-roading is hard, but recovering a stuck vehicle off-road? Oh, no! That's even harder. Today, we're breaking down off-road recovery fails. We're joined by the pros for Matt's off-road recovery. And of course, we're joined by Robbie Layton. These guys are gonna tell us exactly what the amateurs got wrong so you don't make the same mistake. This is some real mechanic stuff. Let's get this show off the road. First clip. Ah yes, the stuck XJ in the mud. Right off the bat, a lot of cooks in the kitchen. That always happens when there's a recovery, people just gravitate to it. Everyone wants to give their two cents. Yep, and then, yeah. It's, that's a metal bumper, but it looks like the strap is in the, oh! Oh, no! <laughs> they hit the ejecto front axle button. <laughs> it looks like they connected the strap to the axle that's buried in the mud. He's at the shear point, right? Because that's oh, what's yeah. in furthest, and then he yanks it the same direction. And that just takes the nose of that XJ and it just goes deeper, axle comes out, it's a bad day. That thing's in the mud, and they're trying to do a snatch style recovery, so the energy in whatever vehicle's pulling them is going to be instantly, like, like hitting the nail with a hammer. All that energy is gonna hit that thing at the same time. They thought it was a super good idea to yank it. So a snatch style recovery is kind of like give it the beans and like pull yeah, out. Yeah, like... where you have a vehicle that's moving mm -hmm. with something connecting to another one, and then when it hits the end of it, it's yeah. supposed to pull so the like other one So like jolt it hard. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not a snatch strap they're using. That would be a static strap. And so like a snatch rope has like a little give in it? Yeah, yeah. So the ones that we run have 33% stretch factor, which is quite a bit. Yeah. Like a rubber band. It's just like Tony's jeans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just because a vehicle is unstuck doesn't mean that their recovery attempt is over. Let's see why. Oh, oh no. Is that tail <laughs> dragon? This looks familiar to me. I know what's gonna happen. Blink. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's rolling away. Ooh. You have to be kidding me. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> that guy's like, well. I think I'm sick the rest of the day. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this one's super common. So the vehicle falls over, they were in drive or maybe it was a manual transmission, whatever, got knocked into neutral. They flip it over and now nothing's stopping it. Just rolls it. right off the Yeah. Me. So before you ever do a job like that, you're gonna figure out a way to stabilize the vehicle. There's lots of different ways to do it. You could hook a winch to this vehicle or a rope. So this guy is what I'm using to pull it over. Mm -hmm. And then this is like an anchor vehicle. Yep, and as it goes over, I'll just hold this rope here. And now it can't roll backwards. Safe. Safe. So even if you do set the brake, you gotta be careful with a little thing we like to call where your car lands. Again, so many people around. Uh, uh, oh, and it keeps oh. rolling. And it's over again. Ah, yeah, yeah. What went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what went wrong? It almost went right. <laughs> they, they got it on its wheels, which was good job. It like but it popped a tire, too. Yeah, it had a lot of energy. So that energy pulled it over. This one's definitely not controlled. That one should have been a winch job. Two vehicles on this side, the winch line from there to there, there to there. They'd start pulling over like this and we'd be letting out, yeah. This one would be letting out. And then you'd get a nice soft set down. Once it's on its wheels, now you've got a chance of getting it out of there. Is there ever a situation where you want people to roll something over? They say you don't have recovery straps or anything? I would call a professional. If you ever get in a situation like that that you feel at risk, call somebody that can bring equipment. Water, it's fun. The beach is fun. Lakes are fun. Pools are fun. Water slides are fun. But water also makes every recovery more dangerous and more challenging. Let's see why in this next clip. Oh no. Well, I mean, <laughs> in this situation, of course it's more challenging. This is like the ocean. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Again, that button. Oh. They hit ejecto frame button. <laughs> oh no. My guess is it's now 
tons heavier. You can see the current, so the current's probably brought sediment and just exactly. crap. Yeah, it's probably full of stuff at this right point. Right here. They obviously anchored to the frame, yeah. not to the body. A lot of times it looks like really common to just hook right here. Mm -hmm. And if you did it with a bridle there and there, you end up just dragging them because mm -hmm. they don't—they won't come over. So you'll see them come try to get over and get to the pillars here, mm -hmm. so that it rolls up like that. And if if they would have done it with that, I think that would have solved the problem. But I think there's something else going on here. That came off really easy. You guys are working with modified vehicles a and lot of times so yeah. how much does like the build quality of someone's project come into play when you're trying to yank it out of the mud or the dunes or something 100 percent of the time yeah so when we're going to pull something out um we look at what we're connecting to and seeing like is it missing bolts how do the welds look and then i'll ask them I'm like how confident are you in this? <laughs> i'm trying to get information from everywhere and then do a little rough calculation and see what it's going to take Uh, you don't always have to call in a pro like Matt every time you get stuck, but you do need to have some idea of what you're doing. This is, yep. Ah. <laughs> All right. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. It ripped my toe hook off. Oh, uh, he went so fast. Dude. Oh my goodness. The fact that it's a Ranger. <laughs> it's a Ford freaking Ranger. Yeah, it's a Ford Ranger. Of course he does stuff like this a lot. <laughs> he probably could have got that guy unstuck with way less speed. Did he even attach the strap to the right location? I mean, or would you give him a better, a better recommendation on that? I think exactly where he went wrong is that static strap. You wanna know how he could have done that successfully? Yes. The kinetic energy rope from mattoproadrecovery.com has 33% stretch. You hit the end of that static line and every bit of your energy stops. And obviously you can see it propels that bumper in whichever way it wants to go. This kinetic energy rope, it hits the end, it stretches and boing! Technology. Yes. All right, Matt, what are some basic tips that you can give to our viewers uh, during their own recoveries? Number one, slow down. Think about it. If you're ready to do like a kinetic recovery, start slow. What is a kinetic recovery? So a kinetic recovery would be with a dynamic rope, like a mass recovery rope, yank and rope, something like that. Say this guy is really, really stuck. The first one might not get him out, mm -hmm. but everything's okay. You haven't broke anything. You haven't killed anybody. Like, it's okay. And just keep doing a little bit more, a little bit more, and then assess the situation. What happened? Did this guy move at all? If it moved a little bit, then you're on the right track. Yeah. If it didn't move at all, reassess the situation. And don't be embarrassed to call a pro in. There's people that do this all over the world, and it's way better than, than hurting somebody. Can we take a minute and like notice that he won? The yeah. truck's out. Yeah. I mean, so it was. It did work. Successful. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. Imagine you've got a stuck vehicle, but you also have heavy equipment laying around. Should you make the attempt? Before we do that, let's thank today's sponsor, DraftKings. This weekend, UFC is battling it out in Canada, and DraftKings offers you the chance to win big. All new customers who sign up using promo code REALMECHANIC and bet just $5 on any of this weekend's fights will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, you could even use those $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings same fight parlays. It lets you combine multiple bets from the same fight into one big bet for a shot an even bigger payout. The more bets you combine, the more you can win. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Remember, new customers sign up with promo code REALMECHANIC and bet just $5 on any fight this weekend and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code REALMECHANIC only at DraftKings Sportbook. Oh no. Oh fun. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes, now they're both oh, going to. Oh oh oh, 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 oh. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> oh, he's still pulling. Oh, he's not Why done. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> It's like every single bit of this is wrong. Uh, Look at how fast it goes. It's it, it got mean, some it speed. Up speed. Wow. Hey. Speed is not the answer. So it looks like he's got him hooked to the vehicle correctly because like we talked about, he's got it on both sides to keep the vehicle from spinning, but he's just got him wrapped around the teeth on that bucket. Mm -hmm. So the strap's not breaking. It's 
popping. Yeah, it popped over. Popping off of those. Yeah. It was like this to start, and it had a really good hook, and then it came down and bye. Yeah. Bye bye, Land Cruiser. So when that strap came down and it grabbed that strap, it shock loads. And so what it does is it sends the energy in a different direction and it wanted to lift that wheel up. So see that right there? It came down, hit the strap, shock loads it, and it wants to pull it over. And it wasn't in park. <laughs> no, no, no. A lot of off-road recoveries get done with equipment like this. They'll do it with farm equipment or construction equipment because it, it does work. It's a good tool for it. That was just a little sketchy. Recovering a stuck vehicle is harder than you might think. The first step of a successful recovery is to plan out in detail, right? How you're gonna pull it off. If you fail to plan, then you plan on failing. Get that tattooed on you. Ugh, just hucking it. Wrong strap. Go, Zach, go! Go, Zach, go! Oh, he's moving. Again, so many voices going. Oh, it's oh, gonna go. Oh, there's a rock. Oh! Right there, that was it. Oh, yeah, right there, right there, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Oh, that broke. This, what are they doing? This is the domino effect in full force. <laughs> yeah. When you start breaking stuff, if you start breaking a strap or a chain, or I don't know what that first thing was, but he broke it. That should tell you it's not working. Right. It's not going that way. It's time for a new plan. So it looks like attempt number one is with this red Dodge. Mm -hmm. This is, it appears as if it's driving on its own power. He's probably assisting it a little bit. But then they hit a rock. Then they hit a rock. I'm thinking at that point, they're like, okay, this isn't gonna work. Let's get something else. Attempt number two has a strap to something. That truck tries to pull, breaks its strap. Now, it appears as if they've got a winch. So that winch probably would have got them out if they would have just used it. What if instead of him, the white truck, yanking if he had just like just put pressure yeah so if he, if he just pulled pressure while the winch basically as an assist it probably could have got it out you were talking about earlier how you gotta make a plan mm -hmm. and execute it you also have to be completely willing to just let go of that plan yeah and start a whole new one i mean this clip is total proof that just because you have a nice truck doesn't come with like a license of being like oh i know how these work now <laughs> A very critical step in the recovery process is to find the right anchor point to attach the tow line. So let's see where this next driver chose to anchor his line. Uh, I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Go straight, down that way. <laughs> oh, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no way. Someone thought that was a good idea. Is that a ratchet strap? <laughs> it's a ratchet strap on the spring. <laughs> oh, no. A lot of these we've seen are like people off-roading and their off-road rigs. This is just like, this is grocery getters. This is commuter cars. This happens a lot, especially in snowy conditions. Mm -hmm. Dude, like you could have that many cars in a ditch and somebody comes up like, I'm gonna pull you out and they just, hook to things <laughs> so they attach to the coil spring and now i know why they did it if you've ever been under modern cars which i know you have mm -hmm. and you start looking for places to hook things they don't have them yeah it's just a big flat sheet and so this guy's got his transit van a modern unibody car this is obviously europe because every car is square and they got doors in the back of them and uh, he's like, oh, well, I think that this looks like a pretty solid piece of metal. Holds the whole car up, don't it? <laughs> so what do you think they should have done in this well, situation? I mean, if they were using, if, if a ratchet strap, the only thing they had, it might have worked had they hooked it to a more solid point. That's either an axle shaft or a control arm or a tow hook or a hitch. Do not hook up to your coil springs. So obviously this person didn't know anything about recovery or cars. So uh, they should have watched Matt's off-road recovery. Well, they should or watch your channel. Probably Lake Nation <laughs> or real mechanic stuff. All right, so once you've made the recovery, the final step is to safely secure the vehicle. Like in this clip. Oh God, I mean, this should be fun. That's like a 60 foot strap. You're good, you're good, you're good. Where are you going? 
Oh my goodness. And then the strap come undone. Oh, and he's going back, he let it go. <laughs> you did it just about as wrong as you could. You yanked it too hard, kept going, pulled it through a house, and then lost the car at the end. Zero out of 10. In an emergency situation like this, is the recovery specialist responsible for crowd control? In an emergency scene, your officers will actually clear the scene. So okay. in this situation, you know, if they were professionals, they probably would have had everybody back. Mm -hmm. Somebody would have been in the vehicle. They would have had it tied off really well, a lot shorter line, bring it on the road and stop. You've got 10 people with their phones out watching. Yeah. They're ready for you to fail, mm -hmm. you know. So then slow down, really think it out, be safe and don't be this. Okay, Robbie, we got one last video to show you, but before we do that, tell everybody who you are and where they can find you. So my name is Robbie Layton. I run a YouTube channel, it's called Robbie Layton Nation. A cool mixture of things, not just recoveries, we are collision repair experts. We just do anything automotive. Let's tell everybody out there who doesn't know where they can see the insane recoveries that you and your crew pulls off. I'm Matt. I've got a little YouTube channel called Matt's Off-Road Recovery. If you come over there, you'll get to see people drive off into crazy places and they'll make you wonder what they were thinking and we get them out. Go watch Matt's Off-Road Recovery. It's super great stuff, great videos. Hit the subscribe button, you won't regret it. Unlike the person in our next clip who's full of regret. This brave four by four warrior is stuck on an obstacle so intimidating, the locals call, I know what this is. The locals call it the wall. I already know what happens. Let's see what happens. We made it here. The oh, wall. Yeah. who is that? Oh, that's James Pumphrey. That guy looks familiar. They, they all look familiar. Very good job, very impressive. But where they stopped was right at the edge of a, like a crest. A crest oh man, yeah. this is hilarious. Have you seen this? Go, 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 go. Straight, straight. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> is that the wedge? Is that, that spring loaded? Whole bumper. Uh, it's not supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we said before, when you're in a situation with like a partner, the spotter is your eyes. Yes. So that probably wasn't even the driver's fault. Yeah. If you don't know, this is uh, high low, the Tacoma seasons. We built one expensive overlander and one cheap overlander. This is the expensive one. Okay, I was gonna say, is this high or low? Which, this is the high truck no with the expensive ARB bumper and winch combo. And they're trying to get it up this rock and it's, the winch is anchored down to the ground. So what did they do wrong here? In, in its defense. It? That is like a straight downhill pull yes. at the end. That bumper should have easily handled that Yeah, had it been properly attached. Really? So we're bad at driving and building? <laughs> you should be able to hang that truck from the bumper and shake it like a rag doll. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> different manufacturers have different strengths of those front frame horns. So it's probably not the fault of the bumper at all. Yeah. And it's probably not your fault. Probably not, I'll take that. It was probably attached exactly with all the bolts that should have. And then the force going down, like there might be like two bolts on the sides and one on the bottom and it just peeled it open. You know what, that, that bumper just didn't want to be on anymore. Matt, thank you so much for having us out to your state and your beautiful playground. This, I love it here. I think I'm gonna move to Utah. If you want me to move to Utah, let me know in the comments <laughs> down below if you wanna see us do more stuff with Matt and the gang. Again, let us know in the comments. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to Donut. Are you guys even listening? Y'all, have a good one.